let us see with the help of diagram the simple squamous epithelium. So as you can appreciate, this is a flat layer of epithelial cell, the simple squamous cell. And they are resting on a basement membrane. Why they are simple? Because all of them, they are touching the basement membrane. Now, as I told you, the flat epithelium is very well suited for places where diffusion is required. So this is an example of a lung alveoli as we can appreciate in this diagram. And you can see that there is a single layer of cell that we can see over here, which is lining the lung alveolus. This is facilitating the passage or the exchange of gases. Okay, this is a simple squamous epithelial lining, lining the lung alveoli where diffusion is required. Another very good example over here is that of a vein. So this is the lumen of a large blood vessel. You can appreciate single flat squamous epithelial lining of the endothelium. And this flat surface is facilitating the diffusion of gases as well as diffusion across of fluids, okay, exchange of fluids. This is another example of squamous epithelium, okay. So, with this, we have completed and we have seen that there are three examples. Number one is the lung alveoli, number two is lining of the endothelium, and number three is the lining of the cavities. These are all examples of simple squamous epithelium, and you should remember them by heart. So, as we can appreciate over here that we are having a simple cuboidal epithelium over here. The lining is made out of squarish cells. The cells are squarish. And you can see that there is a single layer which is lying on the basement membrane. So, since all the cells are touching the basement membrane, it is a simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, the nucleus is round and they are at the center as we have discussed. Okay, on the right hand side, we are seeing a collecting tubule of a kidney wherein multiple kidney tubules can be appreciated in this particular diagram. We can see that there is a single layer of squarish cells and each is having a centrally placed round nucleus over here. This is the classical example of simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, Now, these cells, they might have a secretory activity as well as absorptive activity over here in this particular diagram. Myself, Dr. Gibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important video. Today, we are going to start with the basic functional histology and in today's lecture, we are going to start with the basic tissue that is the epithelia. In the next lecture, we are going to see the glands and subsequently, we will read about the muscles and the nervous tissue. Okay, with this, we are going to understand the basic tissue. So this is basically for those uh, medical students and for postgraduate students, okay, to make the concepts of histology quite clear. So, let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any time. So, we are first going to read about the epithelium today in this video. So, let us see what is the epithelium. So, epithelium, it, it is a diverse group of tissue that is including both the surface epithelia that is lining the surface as well as those epithelium which is forming the solid organs. So, the surface epithelia, if you see, they are lining all the body surfaces including the body cavities. Which body cavities? Like the peritoneal cavity, pleural cavity, pericardial cavity lining the tubes and they also form an interface between the different biological compartments. I will tell you what is the meaning of that. So, basically, I am just revising what are the functions of the epithelia. They are forming a protective barrier. They are also helping in exchange of molecules between the different compartments. Yes, the epithelia, they are forming a barrier between two compartments and they allow exchange of molecules between them. And some types of epithelia, they are also involved in synthesis and secretion of glandular products. So, much of that we will understand as we are going to go through the later part of the video. Now, individual epithelial cells, if you see, they are characterized by the production of certain keratin intermediate filaments. Okay, And this can be utilized to recognize certain epithelial cells using immunohistochemistry. So, for example, certain epithelial cell, for example, epithelial cell number 1 and there is epithelial cell number 2. So, for example, some kind of cytokeratin, for example, CK7 is produced by some kind of epithelial cell. Whereas, for example, some kind of, some other kind of cytokeratin like cytokeratin 5 is produced by another epithelial cell, okay. So, very importantly, different kinds of intermediate filaments, for example, the cytokeratin are produced by different epithelial cells and this knowledge and this is utilized in actually diagnostic histopathology to classify the difficult malignant tumors. So, because the epithelial cells are involved in production of keratin intermediate filament, 
therefore they are used as a marker for classifying the difficult malignant tumors okay so later on when you read about the tumors when you go and perform Im immunohistochemistry you will see that there are different kinds of cytokeratin uh, you know antibody cocktails are available okay which is basically used okay for classifying the difficult uh, different kinds of epithelial malignancies now the surface epithelia they form a continuous sheet comprising one or more layers of cell now the epithelial cells they are bound to adjacent cells via a variety of cell junctions that provide physical strength and which is also mediating the exchange of molecules between the different compartments so if this is one epithelial cell another epithelial cell they are joined to each other by cell junctions now we have already discussed in details about the cell junctions like the tight junctions desmosomes hemidesmosomes so all these things we have discussed in details in the chapter number 1 of robins that is the cell as a unit of health and disease which has already been uploaded in the website in detail so you might want to go and check that lecture as well okay now all the epithelia they are supported by a basement membrane which is separating the epithelium from the underlying supporting tissue so for example this is the basement membrane okay on top of that is epithelial tissue and beneath that is the supporting tissue now thus we can say that the epithelial cells they are polarized for example this is the epithelial cell okay this surface which is facing the basement membrane and the supporting tissue this is called as the basal surface of the epithelium and on top is the apical surface which is away from the basement membrane we are calling it as the apical surface therefore we say that the epithelial cells are polarized in nature now classification of the epithelia now on the broad basis on the broader basis you will see that epithelia can be classified as simple epithelium and stratified epithelium so what is the basic point of difference in a simple epithelium if you see there is a single layer of cells okay there might be a single layer of squamous cell single layer of cuboidal cell or single layer of columnar cell but the major characteristic over here is that that all the cells all the cells in a simple epithelium they are in contact with the basement membrane okay all the cells are in contact with the basement membrane and there is a single layer of cell okay whereas in case of the stratified epithelium you have a basement membrane as well but very importantly there are more than one layer of cell as we can appreciate over here so there are multiple layer of cell as we can see over here okay so the layer of cell is multiple over here okay and if you see all the cells they are not in contact with the basement membrane okay so there can be stratified squamous cuboidal and transitional now what is very important at this point of time is that that you should know the examples of each type because usually they are not asked to you in the exams okay but if it is asked and if you are not able to answer then straight away you will be failed because this is something that you should be you know knowing this is understood that you should know these points so for example if you see simple squamous simple cuboidal simple columnar epithelium so what are the examples the simple squamous is a flat epithelium the examples includes the lining of the cavities like the peritoneal cavity pleural cavity pericardial cavity along with that it is also lining those structures where there is exchange of gases or fluids for example vascular endothelial lining or even the lung alveoli lining okay is also simple squamous epithelium secondly we are having the simple cuboidal epithelium which is lining the collecting tubule of the kidney okay sometimes such epithelium can be specialized by the presence of microvilli as we can appreciate in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney okay so simple cuboidal epithelium is seen in the collecting tubule of the kidney and it is specialized to contain microvillus in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney as well now very importantly the simple columnar epithelium is seen in the gallbladder small intestine in the small intestine they are specialized to contain microvilli as well in the female genital tract you will see the simple columnar epithelium and in the fallopian tube they are specialized to contain surface cilia i will show you with the help of diagram again pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is present mainly in the respiratory tract again columnar epithelium is present in the small and large bowel but they are also having the goblet cells which is secreting the mucus okay again in the vast difference you are having the stereocilia so in all these places you are having the simple columnar epithelium and they are specialized to contain either villi or cilia or 
goblet cells or they are pseudostratified okay depending on the nature of their function okay so these are the major examples of the simple epithelia now we are going to see the stratified epithelia so stratified squamous epithelia is mainly seen now remember always that simple epithelia is mainly seen in those places where they cannot withstand mechanical stress or mechanical abrasion well so they are seen in those areas which are required for some other function like diffusion of either gases or liquids okay they are found in those areas or they are lining the cavities whereas stratified epithelium is found in those areas where you are required to withstand mechanical abrasion okay for example our skin or for example those areas which are exposed to the outside okay for example the lining of the oral cavity then sometimes keratinization is present for example in the epidermis of the skin it is uh, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium now stratified cuboidal epithelium again it is present mainly in the lining of the exocrine gland duct so this is a gland and this is a duct so in the lining you can have a stratified layer of cuboidal epithelium and transitional epithelium is a specialized epithelium which is present in the uh, in the urothelium in the urothelial tissues of our body okay including the bladder urethra okay ureter so all of them they are containing the urothelial lining so with this basic classification in our mind let us begin today's topic of discussion first we are going to discuss about the simple epithelium so simple epithelium as you see they are defined as a surface epithelia consisting of a single layer of cell now they are almost always found at the interfaces involved in simple diffusion or absorption or secretion so they are always present at those areas where diffusion of gases or diffusion of liquid or fluid is required or any kind of absorption is required for example in the intestine or for example some kind of secretion is required now they are providing very little or no protection against mechanical abrasion so they are not found on surfaces which are subject to stress for example you will not see any simple epithelia on the skin or in the oral cavity or in the vaginal lining you will not see any such lining over there now the cells of the simple epithelia as you remember they can range from flattened to columnar to tall columnar depending on what is the requirement of the function so for example the flat simple epithelia okay which is very thin okay the flat epithelium will be present at those places where diffusion of gases is required or exchange of fluid is required okay so diffusion of gases for example in the lung alveoli or for example uh, across the endothelial lining where again diffusion of gases as well as diffusion of fluid occurs so lining of the blood vessels or the endothelium again it is simple squamous they are flat epithelium also they are you know they are also lining the body cavities there again where fluid absorption and secretion occurs for example the pleural cavity pericardial cavity or uh, for example the peritoneal cavity so at these places where diffusion of fluids or diffusion of gases is required we have a flat epithelium similarly in contrast highly active epithelial cells such as the cells which are lining the small intestine they are generally quite tall and uh, you know for example the intestinal cells they are quite tall because they are highly active they are highly proliferative highly active cells they are having a lot of secretions and because of such uh, an uh, increased amount of activity they have to have an increased number of organelles so they need to have more amount of space so in that case the lining becomes columnar in nature or oh, understand what i am saying so depending on the activity okay the the, the the simple epithelia might be flat as simple squamous or they might be cuboidal or they might be columnar now sometimes they will be specialized okay and they might contain cilia or microvilli depending on the function that they will perform so the first very important epithelium that we are going to see over here is the simple squamous epithelium as i have already said so the simple squamous epithelium is composed of flattened group of cells okay and they are forming a continuous surface layer forming a pavemented epithelium now like all epithelia they are also supported by a basement membrane i will show you with the help of diagram and because it is a flattened or thin epithelium so that is why they are well suited for passive transport or diffusion of either gases in the lung or of fluids for example in the endothelial lining or for example in the body cavity so simple squamous epithelium is also forming a delicate lining of pleural pericardial or peritoneal cavities where it is allowing the passage of tissue fluid 
into and outside these cavities okay so let us see with the help of diagram the simple squamous epithelium so as you can appreciate this is a flat layer of epithelial cell the simple squamous cell and they are resting on a basement membrane why they are simple because all of them they are touching the basement membrane now as i told you the flat epithelium is very well suited for places where diffusion is required so this is an example of a lung alveoli as we can appreciate in this diagram and you can see that there is a single layer of cell that we can see over here which is lining the lung alveolus this is facilitating the passage or the exchange of gases okay this is a simple squamous epithelial lining lining the lung alveoli where diffusion is required another very good example over here is that of a vein so this is the lumen of a large blood vessel you can appreciate single flat squamous epithelial lining of the endothelium and this flat surface is facilitating the diffusion of gases as well as diffusion across of fluids okay exchange of fluids this is another example of squamous epithelium okay so with this we have completed and we have seen that there are three examples number one is the lung alveoli number two is lining of the endothelium and number three is the lining of the cavities these are all example of simple squamous epithelium and you should remember them by heart the second kind of single uh, the simple epithelium is your simple cuboidal epithelium which is an intermediate form between the simple squamous and the simple columnar epithelium now in the section what you are going to see the simple cuboidal epithelium they are lying perpendicular to the basement membrane so again all of them are in contact with the basement membrane and the classical feature is that that these cells they are squarish in nature so if you see over here they are more or less square and the nucleus is at the center and the nucleus is round okay this is a classical feature of a simple cuboidal epithelium okay and this is the feature that we see usually they are lining the smaller ducts and the tubules and they might have an excretory secretory or absorptive function very commonly they are seen in the collecting tubules of the kidney and the small excretory ducts of the salivary glands as well as the pancreas mind it i am saying the smaller ducts okay not the larger ducts so as we can appreciate over here that we are having a simple cuboidal epithelium over here the lining is made out of squarish cell the cells are squarish and you can see that there is a single layer which is lying on the basement membrane so since all the cells are touching the basement membrane it is a simple cuboidal epithelium okay the nucleus is round and they are at the center as we have discussed okay on the right hand side we are seeing a collecting tubule of a kidney wherein multiple kidney tubules can be appreciated in this particular diagram we can see that there is a single layer of squarish cells and each is having a centrally placed round nucleus over here this is the classical example of simple cuboidal epithelium okay now these cells they might have a secretory activity as well as absorptive activity over here in this particular diagram next we are going to read about the simple columnar epithelium now just like the cuboidal epithelium okay these cells if you see they are resting on a single basement membrane but they are elongated the cells are taller in size okay very importantly if you see all these cells they are lying on the basement membrane and they are touching the basement membrane so they are simple epithelium and because they are longer compared to the cuboidal epithelium so they are simple columnar epithelium they are taller even the nucleus if you see they are elongated and remember the nucleus can either be situated at the base for example or they can be mid zonal or they can be apical so they are polar in nature this is what i want to tell you there is the polarity of the nucleus most importantly the simple columnar epithelium they are present on the absorptive surfaces of the small intestine and very importantly uh, uh, they can also be present in the secretory surface of the stomach so they can have both absorptive as well as secretory activity and they can be specialized to have a cilia or a microvilli depending on their location so in this diagram we can appreciate this tall looking cell that is present all of them are resting on the basement membrane so it becomes a simple columnar epithelium over here most of the cells are elong most of the nucleus is elongated and they are basal but they can be present mid zonal or they can be present in the apical layer also on the right hand side we can see a simple columnar epithelium over here 
दिस इज बेसिकली द लाइनिंग ऑफ द एंडो सर्विक्स ओके दे आर लाइनिंग ऑफ द एंडो सर्विक्स ओवर हियर वी कैन अप्रिशिएट द टॉल कलमनर सेल दिस अ सिंगल लाइनिंग ऑफ द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन ऑल द सेल्स आर लाइनिंग एंड दे आर टचिंग द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन ओवर हियर and very importantly they are having uh, you know basally located elongated nucleus now always remember that in between you will have certain cells okay which will be you know uh, mucus secreting cells okay that will also be there over here but over here is not shown but i am just trying to show you a simple columnar epithelium with the help of this diagram the example is that of an endocervix now next we are going to see simple columnar but ciliated epithelium so in addition to having this lining okay in addition to having this simple columnar lining you are going to have the presence of cilia now very importantly this is called as a ciliated epithelium now depending if it is cuboidal if it is columnar you will call it as simple columnar ciliated or cuboidal ciliated just like that okay so we are having a simple columnar ciliated epithelium so some simple columnar epithelia they are having a surface cilia in majority of the cell okay among the ciliated cells you will see certain cells for example over here these cells they are non ciliated they do not have any cilia and those cells which are not having cilia they are having secretory activity okay so cilia if you compare it with a microvilli they are much larger and they can be readily visible by a light microscope and individual cilia consist of finger like projection of plasma membrane and the cytoplasm is containing modified microtubules each cell can have up to 300 cilia that beat in a wave like manner which is synchronized with the adjacent cell so for example if one cell or the cilia is like this in the adjacent cell the cilia will also be like this so there is a synchronized movement of the cilia with the adjacent cell so that a wave like movement can be achieved very commonly they are found in the female reproductive tract simple columnar ciliated epithelium most commonly in the fallopian tube wherein it is facilitating the movement of the ova now this is the example of this uh, uh, simple columnar ciliated epithelium so first of all we can see the basement membrane over here we can see the tall columnar cell over here and we can see the cilia over here very importantly you will see that at some places the cilia is absent and at these places these cells are actually secretory in nature okay they are secretory in nature this is the fallopian tube on the right hand side we can appreciate they are having the tall columnar cell over here and very importantly this is the layer of the cilia and the cilia has an important function over here for transport of the ovum from the ovary towards the uterus now very importantly you will see that most of the uh, uh, nucleus they are elongated and over here in this case in the fallopian tube they are mid zonal they are present in the middle and most of these cells they are having a cilia but certain cells over here you can see the nucleus is basically located basally and these cells basically they do not have cilia and these are actually secretory in nature okay so this is the classical example of a simple columnar ciliated epithelium which is present in the fallopian tube okay fallopian tube lining the next very important uh, type of simple epithelia that we will see is a pseudo stratified epithelium as we can appreciate from the name they are pseudo stratified so although they look like they are having stratified epithelium but in reality they are a simple epithelium let me show you with the help of example for example some cells are like this okay some cells are like this again some cells are like this okay some cells are like this some cells are like this again some cells are like this so basically what is happening over here that it is giving a false impression that there is multiple layers okay all these cells they are touching the basement membrane number two thing is that if you look at the nucleus over here okay some of the nucleus is up some of the nucleus is down okay so it is giving a false impression that there are multiple layers okay but remember most of the nucleus they are situated in the basal to third location only okay and remember they are having cilia okay whereas few cells will not have cilia whereas most of the cells they are having cilia this is the classical pseudo stratified why it is pseudo stratified because all the cells that we are seeing they are touching the basement membrane over here but there is a false impression that there is multiple layer of cells why there is a false impression because the nucleus is up and down over here so this is classically seen lining the respiratory epithelium and therefore they are also called as a respiratory epithelium so the entire 
airway of the respiratory tract they are lined mainly by the uh, um, uh, they are lined mainly by the pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium okay so how do we distinguish it from a stratified epithelium there are two things firstly if you see the nucleus is up and down over here so as a result it is uh, uh, basically giving us an appearance okay that it is stratified and most of them they are uh, in the basal two third location okay Secondly, very important cilia is present. Remember, cilia is never present in a stratified epithelium. Okay, so presence of cilia and the presence of nucleus in the two third part is indicative that it is a simple epithelium and it is not a uh, stratified epithelium. That is why called as pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Let me show you. This is the classical picture of a pseudo stratified epithelium. So, what you are going to appreciate that all these cells if you can appreciate all the cells they are touching the basement membrane okay so therefore they are a simple epithelia but because the nucleus is present at the different levels so we are getting an idea of false impression that they are stratified okay so as a result they are called as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay very important thing now very importantly on the right hand side we can see the respiratory epithelial lining so on top we are having a cilia very importantly now we can see that the cells they are at different level the nucleus is at the different levels over here so that is giving an impression that they are stratified that multiple layers of cell are, are seen but if you see microscopically ultrascopically all these cells they are touching the basement membrane therefore they are not true stratified epithelia they are false stratified therefore they are called as pseudo stratified epithelium very importantly in between we are seeing the presence of goblet cells also over here now very important these goblet cells usually they are non ciliated any uh, ciliated epithelium will contain majority of the cells as ciliated cells whereas few number of cells you will see that they are uh, you know non ciliated and they are usually having a secretory function okay similarly over here there is a goblet cell which is basically secreting the mucus to clear the airways and to capture any dust particles okay over here we cannot appreciate these goblet cells as being non ciliated but they are non ciliated if you see certain portions of the epithelium they are non ciliated okay and these are the areas which is containing the non secretory cells uh, sorry, which are containing the non ciliated cell that is the goblet cell which are secretory in nature and which are secreting the mucus as we can appreciate in this particular diagram. Okay. Next, we are now going to start with the stratified epithelium. So, what is the meaning of a stratified epithelium? As I have already spoken about, there will be multiple layers of cell as I have already telling you over here. Okay, and you will see that all the cells, they are not touching the basement membrane. Only the first layer is touching the basement membrane. So, this is the stratified epithelium. It might be a stratified squamous epithelium, stratified cuboidal epithelium. We do not have a stratified columnar, but we are having in place a transitional epithelium, which is lining the urinary tract. So, let us first start with the stratified squamous epithelium. So, stratified squamous epithelium, they are comprising variable number of cell layers that is exhibiting a maturation pattern from cuboidal basal layer to flattened surface layer. Now, the basal cells which are adherent to the basement membrane, they are continuously dividing stem cells and the offspring, they migrate towards the surface where they are ultimately shed as a nucleate squam. So, let me just show you with the help of this diagram how the stratified squamous epithelium is so at the base okay which is attached to the basement membrane you are having some cuboidal basal cells okay and these cells if you see they are mitotically active they are rapidly proliferating dividing and a lot of mitotic activity is taking place in the basal layer in the normal stratified squamous epithelium okay just above the basal layer you will see that the cells they become more and more polygonal in nature okay the cells become more polygonal in nature okay okay and some of the layers of these cells if you see they will have a lot of granules okay these are the stratum granular layer and this is providing a waterproof barrier okay waterproof barrier this in between cell the stratum intermediate group of cells these are polygonal group of cells and their cytoplasm of these cells they are quite clear because of the presence of glycogen 
but as you go up the cells will start to become more and more flat okay they will become more and more flat and ultimately these flat cells they will be shed like this okay without a nucleus this is called as a nucleate squamous i will show you with the help of diagram what a a nucleate squamous so this is the normal maturation that we see when you see an epithelium like this there is this is a normal maturation and you have to understand the presence of this normal maturation because only when this normal maturation is present i can call it as a normal but for example in epithelia which is involved by dysplasia mild moderate severe dysplasia for example in in uh, dysplasia involving the cervix so for example over there this orderly maturation is lost and you have disordered maturation called as dysplasia so to differentiate between the two you have to understand the normal maturation and that is why this is the significance of understanding the normal maturation of this epithelium over here so the stratified squamous epithelium remember as i told you before because the stratified epithelium they are better suited to withstand any kind of mechanical abrasion they are having a lot of cellular junction you can appreciate over here there are multiple cells and each one of them is having a lot of cell junction tight junction which are holding this epithelium together okay and they are also producing their own keratin intermediate filament so from the beginning only some amount of keratin filament is getting produced and as you go up okay in the end you just have a layer of keratin with some specialized lipids which are present on top okay remember this type of epithelium is lining those places which are subject to mechanical abrasion like the oral cavity the pharynx esophagus anal canal uterine cervix and the vagina these are the sites which are subject to mechanical abrasion and some of these areas are also kept moist by glandular secretion such as the salivary glands of the mouth now remember the keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium constitutes the epithelial surface of the skin that is the epidermis and it is adapted to withstand the constant abrasion to which the body surface is exposed okay so sometimes on top of this you will have a layer of keratin that is called as the keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium and they do not have any nucleus the keratin layer doesn't have any nucleus actually okay now during the maturation the epithelial cells will accumulate the keratin intermediate filament which are cross linked with the proteins such as involucrin and loricrin this is a process called as keratinization or cornification which results in the formation of a tough non living surface layer that is the stratum corneum consisting of compacted cross linked keratin matrix interspersed with specialized lipid just like i told you the surface layer will contain just keratin this will be a dead cell no nucleus is present and they will have specialized lipid also so this superficial layer will form the stratum corneum now the underlying granular cell layer as i told you they will have a lot of granules the stratum granular layer they will have extensive tight junctions and therefore they form a waterproof barrier so water cannot infiltrate inside through the skin okay and as you are going up the nucleus will become progressively more condensed or pycnotic and eventually they will disappear along with other cellular organelle so on the left hand side as we can appreciate this is a single basement membrane only a single layer of cell at the bottom they are connected to the basement membrane if you see there are more layers polygonal layers of cells and as you go up the cells are becoming more and more flat so on the right hand side we can see the lining of the uterine cervix over here the basal layer if you can appreciate okay this is the basal layer this is the basal cuboidal layer okay and very important if you see we are also call it as the basaloid group of cells or the basal looking cells they are having high nc ratio and very importantly they have a very high mitotic activity which you can appreciate with increased mitotic figures over here okay just as you go above the basal layer you will have the layers of cells okay which are becoming more polygonal and the cytoplasm is clear why they are clear because of presence of glycogen so large polygonal cells will come above the basal cell layer and as you go more and more up okay the cells are becoming more and more flat okay they are becoming more and more flat and ultimately these cells okay they will die and they will shed off as a nucleate squamous also if you see as the nucleus is going up they are more and more pycnotic as they are going up okay as you can appreciate over here okay now as i was telling you that as the cells are shed off they will be shed off as a nucleate squam so this all these layers these are actually a nucleate squam okay they are a nucleate squam they do not have any nucleus over here 
Now you can see these are the mature cells which are showing the nucleus. Now remember, the more the cells are matured, they will appear pink, whereas the deeper cells will appear blue in color. Why, what and why this color is there? You can go and see the video on the cytology of the cervix. Okay, cervical cytology video you can see. Okay, on the right hand side, this is again a stratified squamous epithelium, but they are containing a layer of keratin. And if you see this keratin layer, this is a dead layer. This is not containing any nucleus over here. Okay, the skin is lined by the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Okay. After this, we are having the stratified cuboidal epithelium. Now, the stratified cuboidal epithelium is a thin stratified epithelium that is usually consisting of only two to three layers of cuboidal cells. As we can appreciate over here, two to three layers of cuboidal cells. This type of epithelium is usually again seen lining the ducts of the exocrine glands. But these are larger excretory ducts of the exocrine glands, such as salivary glands, such as the pancreas. So, any exocrine gland. Uh, you know, the larger ducts of the exocrine gland, they are having a stratified cuboidal epithelium. So, stratified cuboidal epithelium, you can appreciate that there are two layers, okay, one layer, two layer, okay, there is a basement membrane, there are two layers of the cuboidal cells. Now, this epithelium, this is a stratified cuboidal epithelium is probably not involved in significant absorptive or secretive activity, but merely they are providing a more robust lining uh, as uh, it would be provided by simple as compared to what is provided by simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, so this is very, very important to understand. Okay, now the comes the last uh, that is the transitional epithelium also called as a urothelium. It is the form of stratified epithelium which is found only in the urinary tract in mammals where it is highly specialized to accommodate a greater degree of stretch and to withstand the toxicity of urine. Now this epithelial type is so named that is transitional because they are intermediate between the stratified cuboidal and the stratified squamous epithelia that is why they are transitional. Now, in the non-distended state, the transitional epithelium is having 4 to 5 uh, cell layers thickness. The basal cells, they are roughly cuboidal. The intermediate cells, they are polygonal. And the surface cells, also called as umbrella or dome cells, they are large, rounded and they may contain multiple nuclei. Up to 2 nuclei can be seen. In the stretch state, the transitional uh, cells, they become only 2 to 3 cells thick. Although the actual number of layers remain constant. And the intermediate and the surface layer, they become extremely flattened. So, let us understand with the help of this diagram. So, this is the basal layer. Usually, they are cuboidal to columnar in nature. Then, the middle layer of cells, they are polygonal in nature. Whereas, the upper layer that is called as the umbrella or the dome cells, they are quite large. Okay, they are quite large and they are very much distensible. And very importantly, they are very much thickened, okay. They are quite thickened. They are larger group of cells, okay. And very importantly, on the histopathology, you can appreciate this is the histological slide. The lower layer is mainly cuboidal in nature. The middle layers, you can appreciate this is the non-distended. So, you can see four to five layer of cells, okay. These are the polygonal cells. Whereas the upper layer, you can see they are quite large. And they are quite thick as compared to the polygonal layer. You can appreciate. And very importantly, on the outer surface, they are showing some amount of a scalloping over here. Okay, they show scalloping. And this is the luminal surface. Now, so the luminal surface, if you see, this is the luminal surface. This side is more eosinophilic and stain, and they contain more amount of cytoplasm. And this part appears to be more thickened as compared to the lower part. The upper part, which is facing the lumen, is more thickened as compared to the lower part. These are the actual umbrella cells. So, these cells are the umbrella or the dome shaped cells and sometimes they are also having multiple nucleus within a single cell. Okay, like over here we can appreciate and these can distend a lot. Okay, they can distend a lot to as well as to withstand the distension when the urine is there, when there is excessive distension. So, they can become very flat also. So they are flattened and they are thickened over here as we can appreciate. Okay. So, this is the classical transitional epithelium. Okay. So, thank you everyone for watching this particular video.